What is going on guys welcome back to the C programming tutorial series for beginners in today's video we're going to talk about file operations and error handling in C so let us get right into it. Alright, so let us talk about file operations and see how to open files for reading and writing. It's actually quite simple. All we need to do is we need to create a file object and this is going to be a pointer. So we need to specify the star symbol here and then for example, file PTR or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we can use the F open function with a path. So for example, test.txt and a mode. So W for write, R for read or A for append. I'm going to go with write. Uh, the difference between write and append is that when you write, you overwrite. When you append, you append. So if there is something, you just append to it. With a W, you overwrite it. And if it doesn't exist already, write is going to create it. So now we have this file pointer. And all we need to do here now in order to write something to the file is we need to use a function that is quite similar to the printf function. It's called fprintf. Um, and in this function, f print F, we have to specify uh, the location that we're printing to. So we basically say file PTR and then what we want to print here. Hello world backslash N. There you go. And then in order to actually get this out into the file, we need to flush. So F flush um, file PTR flushes whatever we have written into the actual file. Um, and then we can use it further. If you want to close it, you don't have to flush because you can just say F close file PTR. So you should always close what you open. If you open up a file pointer, you should also close it. Um, but if you want to just print and close, you don't need to flush because the close is automatically flushing. Uh, if you want to flush in between, then do something else and then flush again. And then in the end close, that's fine. You don't need to flush. However, if you close anyways, so we can actually compile this and run this. And now I should be able to find a test.txt file. Hello world. This is how we write into files basically. Now the, the same function can be used to read from a file. So we can say file, file PTR2, F open, and we can open test.txt in reading mode. And essentially, we have multiple ways. Now, what we can do here, a very primitive way to say we have a character C, while and then we can use a function called uh, F get C for F get character. And uh, basically, we can say, okay, C is F get C from the file stream. So from file pointer two, as long as this is not the end of the file, as long as this is not the case, we're going to read the next character. So basically, just print F percent C without backslash in C. That is how we can read a file. Now it's not necessarily a bad way, but it's you know, reading character by character, it works like that you can see. Uh, another way would be let me just copy this here. Another way would be to use file pointer three. And here we can just uh, read the whole thing line by line. So we basically say we have a buffer with let's say 500 characters. And this buffer, we can apply the F gets function to. So we can say to the buffer, we want to write 30 characters from the files, we can also write 500 doesn't really matter uh, from the file PTR three. And then we can print the content of the buffer. Uh, actually, we don't need backslash n because it's going to have one anyways. And then as always, don't forget to close the file pointer. I forgot to do it up here. Never forget to close a file pointer. And you can see that this works as well. Now the problem with this is of course that if we write something into the file, so if we append something in appending mode here, uh, we don't need that we just need f print f into the file ptr4 we're going to write new line backslash n whatever we're going to close this here um, if we do this afterwards we're not going to be able to see the other line so you can see it still only prints hello world 
because uh, f gets basically just prints one line. What we can change here is we can say um, this is not the buffer. This is the current line, for example. And then essentially we say while f gets and then current line 500 file ptr, uh, what was it, three. And as long as this is not null, we're going to print the current line. This is also one thing that we can do here. And of course, close it in the end. There you go. Now it prints everything. Now when working with files, we can encounter a couple of problems. So for example, let's say I try to create a file pointer here. And with this file pointer, um, I want to open a file that does not exist. So non existent .txt in reading mode. So I want to read a file that does not exist, which means it's not going to create it because writing would create it. Um, in this case, this would produce an error. Now I'm not sure if the open operation in and of itself would already produce that error. I don't think so. But if I try to read from it, so if I say buffer 500, which is a character buffer, and then uh, I basically say, let me just copy the code from before here for reading. I'm just going to say that. And we're going to change this to FP. This is going to result in a segmentation fault. Whereas if I call this test.txt, this is going to work as you can see. So how do we deal with such errors in C? How can we do that? Because in C, we don't have a try catch. This is not Java, this is not Python. We don't have such structures. We don't have exception handling in and of itself, basically. Um, what we can do here is we can work with so called error numbers. So we have to import here, we have to include uh, error no dot h for the error numbers. This provides us with uh, the error number itself and with a p error function that prints the error number. Um, essentially, we can say something like if and then if this f open uh, produces a certain error code. So if this or actually we can we can do it like that if the file pointer in this case equals null, then we're going to print the error. Otherwise, we're going to do that. So otherwise, we're going to be able to work here. And if it's if it's null, so if it couldn't open the file, we want to p error error. So this is just a keyword, and then it's going to print the error code. This is not going to work if we don't include that. Right. So if I save this, or actually, I think it shouldn't work. Oh, it still works. I'm not even sure if we need the error number. I think we need the error number if we want to print it, right. So if I say print f percent d backslash n error, no, this is probably this probably won't work. There you go. But if I include it, then it should work. So the error number can be used for if else and so on. Um, this is what you're actually importing with that. And it can be quite useful if you work with sockets and files and so on. But essentially, this is how you do it, you check for certain uh, error numbers for certain conditions, and then you avoid these conditions. Another example would be you have, for example, an integer divider, um, or dividend, what was it like that dividend equals um, 20. And then divisor equals and then let's say this is user input, but for now, I'm going to set it to zero, and then want to print f the result of the calculation divide, uh, or what was it backslash n, there you go, dividend divided by divisor. In this case, of course, this is going to produce an exception, floating point exception, you don't really have a way of catching this and see what you do is you basically say if the visor equals zero, then then just don't do it, or exit with a uh, with an error code. So we can say exit and then exit underscore failure. However, to do that, you need to import you need to include the std because this is the thing that provides us with the exit failure. 
uh, not SDDIO, sorry, STD lip. And then we can do that. We can also do exit success. Uh, but in this case now, this would just exit here. So this is how you have to deal with errors in, in C. You have to basically use the error codes. You have to uh, check if something is null or returns minus uh, negative one. So you can look at the man pages at the documentation of the functions. The function usually tells you, okay, if I return negative one, something went wrong. If I return zero, everything was fine and so on. Uh, so you check for these error codes and then you proceed depending on the result. Some of them you just have to avoid. We don't have a try catch. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.